Hello everyone, welcome back to Run the NBA, and today I wanted to talk about DeAndre Ayton, one of the best third year players in the league last year, one of the players who most emerged in the 2021 playoffs, who really showed himself as a quality player in the NBA, and the true number three in the big three of the Phoenix Suns. Someone who's definitely going to get himself a payday in the next 12 months. In this video, I want to talk about DeAndre Ayton, what I think he can continue to do to improve in the next couple of years and how good DeAndre Ayton truly could be in the NBA or if he simply is really benefiting from good point guard play aka CP3 as many centers previous to him have done so. With that being said, if you do enjoy the video feel free to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's talk about DeAndre Ayton and how I think he can do over the next few years. But first let's talk about DeAndre Ayton last season and in last year's playoffs. Obviously DeAndre Ayton statistically was down last year simply due to the fact that there was more talent and there was more places for the ball to go most notably of course the addition of cp3 but mikhail bridges of course had a much improved year as well jay crowder came into the team there was just more people for the ball to go to and ultimately it obviously was beneficial to the team's success and deandre ayton didn't really have any problems with it and his efficiency went up because of it he shot over 62 percent from the field last year his rebounding numbers stayed as good as ever averaging over 10 a game and he became better on the defensive end that was one of the knocks for deandre ayton early on in his career but his room protection improved last year his mobility on the perimeter and his ability to defend and pick and roll and on switches was much more improved as well he's definitely not amazing at it but he's a lot more serviceable at it and decent at it than he was before and down low in the paint from protecting he is a solid defender down there now and that's not something you could say 18 months ago and so kudos to deandre ayton for approving that part of his game uh, it's also worth noting that deandre ayton is still only 23 he is still a very young player still has lots of time and room to grow so that's worth noting moving forward as well of course deandre ayton most notably came out and had an absolute come out party and breakout in the playoffs and was an absolutely dominant force in some games for phoenix he was that guy on offense on the boards on defense he was doing it all he was carrying the load he shot nearly 66 percent from the field putting up nearly 16 and 12 a night this guy was absolutely dominant in certain matchups against certain certain games. He was just the guy. They'd feed him in the paint, get those offensive rebounds, the putbacks, you name it. He was doing his thing, and he was very dominant in his first playoffs in his NBA career, which is a very good sign for his future. As I mentioned, he does have Chris Paul as his point guard, and Devin Booker now, of course, still as a shooting guard, which is obviously going to help any center. Um, Chris Paul, most notably, has been absolutely historically known to elevate the play of his centers. His centers get overpaid, and then CP3 leaves, and they're not as good. It just happens. Same thing has happened with guys at Russ's playlist. We're talking about guys like DeAndre Jordan, even Adams. Those guys have been overpaid historically and have not lived up to their contracts because they were elevated by the play of their point guard. And now I think any center to be effective other than if you're the elite of the elite and can create your own shot, dribble, or playmake, like someone like Jokic, Carl Anthony Towns, or maybe even Joel Embiid to a point, you're pretty reliant on you need a guard to get you the ball and put you in the right scenarios because you're not creating your own shot like a point guard, like a scoring guard. You need to get the ball to you in the paint or off of pick and rolls or whatever it may be you need someone that can get you the ball in the right scenarios that's just point blank period now all nba point guards can do that to a point but some are a heck of a lot better of doing that than others and chris paul is definitely one of those so do i think chris paul is elevating the play of deandre Ayton right now yeah of course i do because if i didn't then that would just be disrespect to chris paul but in saying that i also don't think that it's DeAndre Ayton is only good right now because of Chris Paul. Because I think if they had another okay point guard on the team or if Devin Booker was still the primary guy, would DeAndre Ayton get some of the looks that he is getting at such a high level? No, probably not because they're not Chris Paul level of playmakers. But at the end of the day, I still think DeAndre Ayton would be scoring a lot on the offensive end. His defensive improvements would not be impacted. And he would still be an elite re rebounder. And so would he be as elite as he is right now? Probably not, at least not from a statistical standpoint 
or from an efficiency standpoint that you can definitely put into question it wouldn't be significant but it would be impacted but nonetheless i think deandre ayton is still one of the best centers in the league and one of the de definitely one of the best young centers in the league and so that begs to lead the question what type of improvement is he going to have moving forward and now i think the biggest thing for him if he wants to improve on it is can he space out his game a little bit more can he hit a bit of a mid-range can he hit a bit of a three-point shot what i don't which i don't think is entirely out of the question he hasn't shot many attempts throughout his nba career but he also hasn't completely shied away from it he did shoot 13 threes in the second year in 20 in last year's season and i wouldn't be completely shocked as the next few years move along that that number does start to raise a little bit closer to 50 70 100 over the next couple of years now, if you can get to himself to the point where he is at least an okay respectable three-point shooter then that's just going to make his offensive game even more dangerous uh, defensively i don't think you're going to see that much more improvements from him anymore i think you could see him continue to get a little bit more comfortable in pick and rolls and on the perimeter but i think he kind of is where he is defensively i don't think he's going to be one of the best defensive centers in the league i think he can be a solid defensive player i think you're definitely seeing that from him right now i don't think he's ever going to be a 20 and 10 guy personally at least not on a good team of course in year two he did put up 18 a season but that wasn't a good team that was a year he was getting a lot more shots and maybe he gets there depending on the teams he plays for if he stays on a, on this phoenix suns team on this nba contender team I don't think he's a 20 and 10 guy in the right scenario 100 percent he is uh, but on this team i don't think he is at any time of this lifespan of this devin book chris paul gail bridges and deandre eight team but with that being said uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section as to regards to how good he could be in the next few years i think he's going to continue to improve a shot a bit but i think other than that i'm not going to see any significant changes in his game but i would love to be wrong and let me know what you guys think down in the comment section the last point I want to mention in this video is Yonder Ayton only has one year left on his contract. Of course, it's still a pretty nice rookie contract. He's getting paid $12.6 million this upcoming season as he was at top pick. He's getting paid deservedly so. But he is now a restricted free agent after this upcoming 2021-22 campaign. Still has not been signed to an extension. And it's going to be interesting to see how much he actually gets. Because if you look at some of the centers over the last few years that have been paid, you're looking at the likes of Rudy Gobert, who got a max deal. You're looking at the likes of Bam Adebayo, who also got his max contract extension. And could you argue that DeAndre Ayton is not at the level of those guys yet? Yeah, definitely. In fact, he probably isn't, especially Rudy Gobert. Probably not Bam Adebayo either. But he's definitely not exponentially far off. And he's also younger still he still has a year left it's going to depend on the development and improvement that he has in this upcoming season as far as the fourth year before he enters this extension and it really just depends on how much phoenix value him and want to keep him as part of their future as deandre ayton and devin booker uh, because i wouldn't be completely shocked that if phoenix didn't give him a max that there would be someone else in the league I would expect that someone else in the league would be willing to give him one. I would not be shocked at all that there's someone in the league that would be willing to give him a max offer. And so with that being said, I do expect that he's going to get a max or very near a max. And I'm not a big advocate for giving centers maxes unless they are of Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic type levels. Because otherwise I just don't think the center position is that impactful to winning at that high price i think the center position is very impactful to winning as far as a good rim protector and interior defender but i don't think they're as impactful to winning as someone who's just quite good but not a superstar player and that's what i think deander ayton is that's what makes his con upcoming contract scenario so intriguing to me because as much as i think phoenix will give him a max or near a max to retain him as he is such an impactful and important part of this team moving forward Paying that much money to a center of Deion Raiden's caliber could end up being hindering long term to building another contending roster. But that is my thoughts on Deion Raiden moving forward into next year, years beyond, and his upcoming restricted free agency. Let me know your thoughts on all of that down below in the comment section. 
you did enjoy the video feel free to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new and if you want to hear my thoughts on more things nba offseason then be sure to click the box on the right hand side of the screen with that being said i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you guys in the next one peace